Today we're going to begin with activity 2.1, need input. So what's in an input? In the physical computing world, a variety of methods can be used to receive data. This might be a signal from your keyboard, a click from your mouse, or a microphone detecting the sound of your voice to activate a digital assistant. Examples of this would be OK Google or Hey Siri. Both are examples of what a digital assistant would be. All of these methods represent different forms of input devices. Buttons A and B on your microbit are a form of an input. When a user presses either or both buttons, it completes an electrical circuit, which then sends a signal to the microcontroller. And if programmed to do so, the microcontroller will send information to another device called an output device. Now we'll explore output devices later on in responding to output. But for now, you'll take a deeper look at the input options available on your microcontroller and use the LED grid as an output device. Your teacher will give you an I.O. device image sheet and kit that includes your microbit and other items that we will use for this activity. Be careful with your electrical components because they are fragile and can break easily. In this activity, you're going to learn about several different types of input devices and what they can detect. One of the first inputs that we're going to look at is your push button. On the front of your microbit controller, you have an A and B button. You can press either the A, B, or both at the same time in order to trigger a digital signal to control your output device. The light level, which is located on the front middle of your microbit controller, uses ambient light to detect an analog value, which will then trigger your output device. The compass, which is embedded to the back of the microbit, uses a magnetic field. This is called the magnometer. On your microbit is an input device that can detect the magnetic fields such as the Earth's magnetic field. The microbit can then detect the direction it is moving in and the direction it is facing and the movement in degrees. This can be used to control different outputs that we will learn about in activity 2.2. Your pressure sensor is an external sensor. This uses force and detects either using a digital or analog value in order to trigger those output devices. The photocell uses photoconductivity or direct light to trigger an analog value that will cause your output devices to work. The flex sensor is another external device that can be used when bending to trigger an analog value that will then control your output device. Now that you have an understanding of the different input options, it's time to start programming your microbit to respond. Using the pair programming collaborative computing strategy, you and a partner will learn how to use the different inputs. Now, pair programming is when two people work together to create a computer program. One person is called the driver. They're the one who writes the code and explains the logic, while the other person, called the navigator, is the one who reviews it and gives feedback. The driver will work on the computer downloading and modifying the code while the navigator will wire the microcontroller and sensors and coach the coding. Each time you change to a new input device, you will change your roles. Have you ever worked on a problem that you couldn't solve? What if you had a partner to help? People always say two heads are better than one. For this very reason, a lot of programmers work in pairs to develop a program. This is referred to as pair programming. Let's take a closer look at how this collaboration works. One of the programmers, called the driver, mans the keyboard and creates the code. The other programmer, called the navigator, observes to identify potential errors and makes suggestions for improvements. Working together in these roles, programmers learn from each other and leverage their individual strengths and talents to produce higher quality code. Pair programming can improve communication. Better communication makes working together easier and more fun. Are you ready to become a pair programmer? Grab your partner and let's get started.
Well, when we first started using pair programming, I thought it was very useful because I love to work with partners and it just made the experience of coding so much better. Well, when we're pair programming in the classroom, it's a it's kind of noisy. It's an organized noise. Like there's sometimes people getting up and so it's not like a normal classroom where you have to stay seated and be quiet. You hear a lot of other cool ideas so you can hear other people talking about how they went through a situation or how they created something and then you can have your own original ideas. Normally you have to problem solve by yourself but having somebody to work with you just makes it easier because you can push yourself to go farther than you are. I love being the driver because I can get my hands on and I like to fix my own mistakes and I can also see what I've done in the app afterwards. My favorite role in paired programming, mostly it's Navigator because I really like to problem solve or if you're coming up with code off the top of your head, I really like to do that too. Sometimes when either the driver or the navigator don't know, sometimes it's just nice to ask another peer just to like maybe see if they know and clarify in kid words so it's easier to understand. I have asked for help and I have helped other people. It kind of works out when there's a class full of teams. Sometimes you don't really agree with your partner when you're programming, but you somehow always find a way to work it out. I'm usually always the person that's ready to go, 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 but with pair programming, you need to be patient and you need to be able to listen to the other person. Now that I've been doing pair programming for a little while, I know when to switch with my partner and we kind of know if there's a problem, like who to now ask. I think it's pretty good getting to do more pair programming because the more people you work with and the more you do it, the more you'll be able to create advanced apps and more cool stuff.